Hello everybody, welcome back to the Minecraft Let's Play. My name is Hocus Pocus and this is episode 5 of the series. So, if you were here for last episode, you'll remember we constructed this small area where we had a station that led out into a ravine that I told you I wanted to begin building in. Um, and since episodes, I've laid a bit of track down, changed a few, thing, a few things here and there. So we've got this uh, polished diorite that runs underneath the tracks. That's just what I'm going to use to... Uh, to separate the colors up a little bit here. Um, so, so far we've got this up and running. If we get in the cart, hit the button. If you don't select any of these pathways, you will run all the way to this, this uh, tunnel. This takes you to our mining area. Uh, let me turn down the, hmm, what would it be for carts? I'm not sure, players maybe? Let's go to 30 on there. Nope, um, okay, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure which one is for carts here. Ambient environment, uh, I'm not sure, but anyway, we, as I was saying, we have four tunnels because what I realized is, um, we could have, we have the, uh, we have the space available for four tunnels because if we have three switches, that means you can choose to go one of four ways. You can either take the first cart or the first track, which will be the first switch, the second track, which will be the second tri uh, switch, the third track, which will be the third switch, or the fourth track, which will be when no switches are selected. So if no switches are selected, the cart will simply go all the way down to the fourth tunnel and head towards the mining area. So I think that works out okay. The only issue I have is that when we come back on the return leg of the journey, we make it to this corner, come round, and we hit this bend here and immediately go up into this tunnel. So we're gonna have to figure out a way where when we come back, we don't hit that bend. Uh, so probably gonna have to separate the tracks off into two somewhere along the line um, And we can figure that out together today So I think what I'll do guys is I might go off camera for a second See if I can come up with a solution to that issue and once I found one we'll rejoin each other and take a look at it So catch you in a second Okay guys, we are back and I have sort of devised a little plan for this section of rail here and apologies if you got a bit confused about my first explanation in the first clip back there. I just rewatched it and it seemed as though I was confused by something or distracted by something. I was talking in a very strange way. So if that confused you, I'm sorry. Hopefully, uh, now that I've laid out the tracks like this, you will understand what's happened. So essentially the issue was that when you come back on the return leg, you would be sent up one of these tunnels rather than coming back to the station here. So I think the solution to that is to have two rails. So this will be the outbound rail and this will be the inbound rail. So on the outbound rail, it will work in the same way. You will just head out in this direction like so and every corner will have a bend like this. So that if you're heading, if you've, if you've got the track set in this direction, you will just pass over it. If the if one of the switches are pulled down, then this track will rotate in the opposite direction and you will be instead sent down the tunnel. So that's how we're gonna work this in a similar way to we were in a similar way to the way that we were gonna work it before. So that hasn't changed. But in terms of a return journey, we're gonna need to figure something out. So I think actually what we're gonna have to do is move this track over probably by one. So let's actually have the entrance here entrance to the tunnel on this block uh, so we'll just do that like so and this is because when we're separating the tracks we want them to have a block between them just for uh, just for looks really it doesn't serve any sort of functionality purposes just for looks so let's just make sure that they all go in on the right hand side like that and this one needs to be changed also so let's just slot that one in like that and that'll go like that yep that's correct we need to change this final one here and then they all have been edited. There we go. Let's put the stone bricks back in there. Uh, we did it like this, like so, like so. Okay, perfect. So now we have our routes, our outbound routes covered. What we need to do now is devise a way, as I said, to have an outbound, sorry, an inbound rail that will miss this, will miss this branch of rail here and instead attach straight to this one. So let's run this up here for a second and just connect it into the array. So it's going to run along these blocks here and we can just put some polished diorite down to indicate that's where the tracks are going to run. So when they're coming back, they're going to come back in on this block. But obviously we, we want them to, hmm, is there going to be a way to do this? I don't think so. We might have to bridge either over this or under it. So let's let's try under it at first and see how that looks. 
So we could go under and back up. Or we'd have to go under, out that way, and then do like a small turn back into the track, I guess. I guess that's how it works. So let's actually dig out a little bit of this tunnel to give us some space to work. That would probably be a good idea. There we go, let's light it up a little bit. So the track would be coming in here on this block. It would get to this point and then it would go down one, go down another. So let's put it onto that block, onto that block, like so. And then it will go under here. I don't know if this is going to cause us damage because this block obviously, it only is a one block clearance down there. It should be fine because we're not going to be in there long. Uh, but if it if it does cause damage, then maybe we can lower it again. We're going to actually need more diorite and I'm not sure if I have any. So I might have to just strip some from the walls here. So let's just grab a little bit. We can always replace this or fill it back in. It's not an issue, really. So let's grab a little bit of this stuff. It's funny because I never need diorite. I never use it. And then as soon as I do want to use it, I don't have any. I probably have loads back at the base, but I'm not going to run over there and bore you guys. So we're going to have to make this amount do for now. There we go. Uh, so then we'll have the... So we went down. We were down there and we were down there. So we'll... Have a track there, a track there, a track here. And our rail will be running this way. That's not going to work, is it? We're going to have to extend that a little bit more because our track, as I said, is going to be running across this block. So we don't want to collide with it. So let's just put put some track down there so that we know not to, uh, not to touch it. So if we go under again, we'll have block there, there. That's correct. Let's put a bit of track in. And then I believe we should make it come up here. And if you're wondering what this redstone is here, that was just a uh, a little piece that I put in to test out the track switching. Um, and I'll get to that later in the video probably, so don't worry about that for now. Uh, then we will go up another block here, I guess, and we'll be back on level then. We can do a short turn like so. Oops, nope, not like that. We actually want to keep these blocks like so. And run that one like that. Um, hmm. Okay, so this is where, again, we've got another issue. Because we want to be able to run our cart right back into the system. But it's not going to be that easy, is it? Because we need, to, we need it to turn back. So we need the cart to go up here, around this corner, and then make a turn into this track. So it's not going to be as easy as we thought, which is an issue. Um, I might have to pop off camera here again, guys, and have another think about this because my idea I don't think is going to work. So give me another another cut here to think about it. And then once I've thought of a solution to this issue, then we'll be back. So catch you in a second. All right, then, you guys. So the problem, I believe, has been solved. Why don't we check it out? So off camera I dug out a little bit of extra room so we've now got two tracks it separates off into two two main corridors that then lead off into the three wide corridors so you've got this one here this is for outbound carts so the outbound carts will come down here and go out that way inbound carts will be coming down this corridor which I'll dig out eventually so all of this is going to be knocked through like so and it will look similar to that corridor on that side so inbound carts will come this way so let me give you a quick demonstration of how this works so once you exit this area in the cart, so you go around the corner, carry on in this direction like so, you break over that track, and then if you're coming back, you simply, whoa, 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 let me quickly put that back, and then on the way back in, instead of going off into that corridor again, you get rooted into this corridor, and skip over all these tracks, and eventually you make your way all the way to the end, so let's hop off here. Let's just push the cart through on its own. That might be quicker. So the cart will make its way all the way to the end, round the corner, and then into the inbound section of the station there. So now that we've got that working, obviously we've got a ton of polishing up to do in this area and a lot more building and design work to go ahead. I also need to head off into the abandoned shafts up there and grab a few more rails because we've ran dry of those, really. We've got one left right here. Uh, so let me take a little look at that off camera and I will be right back. What's up guys? We are back and you know what? I've decided that we're actually going to save a lot of the digging and a lot of the design work for maybe off camera or a different episode because I want to get through something with you today and that's the wiring for this section of the track. So 
you take a look at this piece of track here, obviously it needs to change direction to uh, based on these levers over here. So this is how we've wired it up. As you can see, we're going to run redstone into the back of this block, which is going to power off this redstone torch, which will then power off this redstone here. That will stop providing power to this block. And once that block has stopped receiving power, this redstone torch will light up, causing this block to gain power and this track to rotate in this direction. So that is exactly how we are going to uh, wire up our changing tracks to determine which direction we want to go. So I think without further ado, we should probably begin to wire that up. And that's what I wanted to do on camera with you guys. So we are also going to be laying down some stone brick for the redstone wire to sit on just so we know whereabouts we have laid our wires when we're digging around here. So let's quickly do that here. So it runs from here through this little corridor right to here. And once we wired it up, I'll show you the levers and how I've uh, wired those up as well. It's very basic. Uh, let's run that up here into the back of that block like so. Uh, we can fill in some of these gaps here. Most likely we don't need them. So this is one of the channels. That means this can probably actually we'll keep that open just in case. We need to move between the channels, but we can fill this in, fill that in there. Okay, so that's that's our first direction wired up. Let's get out of there. Then this is our second direction. We are going to be doing the same thing. So just run the wire out of here. We're also going to need some red, uh, some stone bricks to go on the floor so that we don't forget where we've put our wiring. If we're digging around the area. Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to just block this hole up. There we go. And there we go. So we can take the wire now from here, run that all along the stone bricks. It's very simple, this setup, very, very simple. And then it runs into the black back of that block just like it should. And then finally for this one, same again. We just need to place down some stone bricks to indicate where the redstone wire is going to sit. So let's do that. Place another torch there. It looks kind of dark. Don't want mobs spawning down here if we can help it. Um, Okay, that's one of our uh, vein, one of our uh, strip mining shoots there, so we can ignore that. So then we can take the wire once again from there and just put it all the way, all the way across the stone bricks and up to the back here. So I think we're going to need a few repeaters in and around there, so let's just figure out where we're going to need them. So if we go over to the levers, we can check out the wiring for those. So this is how it works. You've got them all running off in separate directions here just so that they don't get mixed up together because obviously we don't want one lever to power two rails. So that works like that and then it runs down into the channels that we saw just then. So let's flick one of them on. Let's flick the first one on and see how far the, the signal makes it before we need a repeater. So if we stick a repeater in there, should carry us all the way. And then we will see if we head up here that the track has changed direction. So now if we come to this track, we'll take a right instead of going straight. So let's turn that one off and just ensure that it works. So we turn that off and the track again has returned to its regular position. So now we can go and do the second lever. So let's just switch that on and see how far the signal makes it. Oh, I need to take that block out. Okay, so repeater in there. Is that going to take us the distance? No, it's not. Is that another repeater there then? And there you go, the track has changed, so now we'll take the right instead of the straight. Then we can turn that off just to double check that it was working okay. So let's switch it off. And there you have it, we would take another. We would take the straight instead of the right turn now. So we can finally get the third and last lever fixed up. So let's just check again how far the signal goes on this one. Okay, repeater in there, we're probably going to need a couple repeaters here too. So another one in there. Oh, let's just change that back to a single pulse. And there we go. That has again worked. So we take the right turn instead of the straight. Let's just switch it off to double check. And if that works, then they are all working perfectly. And we can replace the blocks that we use to uh, dig into there. So there you go. We take the straight instead of the right. So that is working perfectly as it should, which is nice. So now we can replace these blocks. So we've got a cobble and an andesite there cobble on top and the hand is out on the bottom. There we go. So all we need to do now is uh, route these two destinations and then stick the destinations on the signs here and we are good to go, which is great. So from this point on in the video, guys, I'm unsure what we're going to tackle, but I will jump off camera right here, have a think about it. And once I've decided, I will be right back. 
Alright guys, I've checked the timings of this video and unfortunately that's going to have to be that for today as we have recorded enough for this episode to go out. And, you know, I think although we didn't do all that much in this episode, um, I still think we've achieved a good amount because now we have essentially hooked up this part of our base to the main part of our base once we've added in the rails here. And that's going to make a huge difference in us because... Sorry, it's going to make a huge difference in the ease of play in this game because it's going to allow us to go from here, the ravine, to our mining and base area very quickly via minecart. So that's going to allow us to bring a lot of materials over here and everything we're going to need to get the building moving quicker. So that's great. But anyway, guys, I really do hope you liked today's episode. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below. Drop a comment with any feedback you may have, negative, positive, neutral. I'll accept it all. I'll read it all. If you have any questions or suggestions, be sure to drop those down below as well. If you want to stay tuned to the series and you're new around here, then be sure to hit the subscribe button because we've got great things coming. And an optional thing as well, if you do want notifications of when my videos go live, you can get that from YouTube by clicking the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. So once again, you guys, thank you very much for being with me today and watching the video. Be sure to take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.